and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be transforming five thrift store items into high-end decor pieces. All of the projects today are really easy to do, and I will be using my Cricut Explore 3 to transform each project today. I do want to thank Cricut so much for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get started. For the first DIY today, I'm going to be transforming this white milk can that I picked up from my local Salvation Army. I paid $2.99 for it, and as soon as I saw this piece, I knew that I could make it look a lot more high-end and fit with my home decor. The first thing that I did was take a small paintbrush and some of my folk art chalk paint in the color rich black and I started just painting this color around all of the edges of the milk can and I was not precise with my paint. I wanted this to look vintage and very farmhouse so I just painted this like I said around all of the edges of the milk can and then for some of the smaller parts on the can I did use a super tiny fine paintbrush just to get a little bit more detail as you can see me doing here. And I also made sure to paint around the bottom of the can and then I used that same really fine paintbrush to do around the edge on the very top of the milk can. Next I'm going to be showing you how I created the design that I'm going to be using on my milk can. I went and opened up my Cricut Design Space. This is a software that came free with my machine. So if you are unfamiliar with Cricut, when you buy a machine, you do get this software for free. They have so many pre-made projects that you can do if you're a beginner or you can create your own designs as well. So to create mine today, I went up to new project and then it holds up a blank canvas. And then for this one, I am going to be using a design that's already created in Design Space. So this project is super easy. I then went over on the left hand side and selected images. And then I'm just going to type in Farm Fresh. This is going to pull up all of the images in Design Space that have the words Farm Fresh. They have so many different designs to choose from. I've used so many of these already to create a lot of projects that I've already done. But for this one, I'm going to be using this one that says a farm fresh dairy with a cute little cow on it. So once I have it selected, you'll see at the bottom that it shows that I have it selected and then I just inserted it into my canvas. I'm then just going to go ahead and resize that. I did mine to about three by three so that it will fit on my can and then I selected make it at the top right hand side. It then pulls up where you can select if you're going to be um, cutting on a mat or not. With the new Cricut Smart Materials, you do not have to cut on a mat, but since I am going to be using just a scrap piece of vinyl, I am going to be cutting on a mat today. So I chose that and I am using a 12 by 24 mat. So then I just hit continue. I don't need to change anything or mirror my image. So then I select continue again. Then it pulls up where you can select the material that you're using. For me, I'm gonna select smart removable Cricut vinyl since that's the one I'm using. Then I'm gonna be using this scrap piece of vinyl. On the back, you can see that it is a grid and it tells you exactly what kind of vinyl it is. Cricut smart vinyl removable. And then placing the vinyl vinyl side up on my mat and then feeding in my mat into my Cricut Explorer 3 and then once it reads the vinyl in the mat it will blink and I will be all ready to hit the play button so that my Cricut machine can cut out my design. Once my machine is all done cutting out my vinyl I'm then going to be weeding the vinyl. For me, I personally like the Smart Vinyl the best. It is so much easier for me to weed, and I am a one that used to struggle a little bit with the weeding process, so I love using this kind of vinyl the best. Well, once my image is all weeded, I'm then gonna be using my Cricut Transfer Tape and just pressing with my Cricut Scraper tool the design onto the tape. But what I like to do is then flip over my design with the tape, and then I just press over the back of the vinyl with my scraper tool and then I remove the vinyl from the tape instead of like having it flipped over and then peeling the tape off. I like to do it this way a little bit better. I think it appeals better and then your design sticks to the tape a lot better this way. Next I place my design in the center of my milk can and then I just use my scraper tool once again to press that vinyl image onto my milk can. And then once I have it all pressed on, I then remove the transfer tape. 
And this is the project all finished. I think it turned out super cute. I cannot believe I only paid $2.99 for this. I was really able to transform it into a high-end piece. And for something similar to this, I would have paid way more in a retail store. Now moving right into DIY number two. For this one, I'm gonna be transforming this cute little accent table that I picked up from Salvation Army. I paid just under $6.50 for it. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is just flipping the table over so it's easier for me to paint. And then I'm painting the entire bottom portions of this table with my folk art chalk paint in the color Rich Black. I only did one coat of this paint because it is a great paint. It covered up perfectly. In some areas, I did have to touch it up a little bit, but I knew I was gonna be distressing it, so I only did one coat. Then for the tabletop, I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster. I did do two different coats of this paint on the tabletop, and then it was all ready for me to create my design. So again, I'm using my Cricut Design Space, and for this one, I'm gonna be creating a stencil. The first thing I did was go to Shapes on the left-hand side, and then I selected the square shape. I just moved that over to the side, and then I'm doing the same thing, going to Shapes once again, and then selecting another square, and then again, just moving that one to the side. I'm then going into Images. I know that I'm gonna be wanting to use a line, so I'm going in the search bar and typing out Line and that is gonna pull up a bunch of different lines that are in design space, and I'm just choosing this yellow one here. And then before inserting it into my canvas, I know I'm gonna be using another image, so I just erased line, and then I typed in B, since I want a B image, and then I just scrolled through all of the B images in design space and picked out one that I really like, which is this one here. And then as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, it'll show me the two images that I have selected. And then I just hit add to canvas, and then there they are into my canvas. Then I'm resizing my line. I'm going up at the top and unlocking the image. And then I'm just gonna be typing one by 14 so that I can make it one inch wide by 14 in length. Then I'm gonna be right clicking and then going down to duplicate, and this is gonna duplicate my image. Next, again, I'm gonna go up, unlock the image size, and then for this one, I'm gonna be making it two inches, again, by 14 inches. Next, I needed to make the back of my stencil, so I took this square, and I did end up playing around with it a little bit by resizing it. I did unlock the image, and for the width, I ended up doing that one at five and a half, and then for the height, I ended up doing it at 14 and a half, just because I wanted it to be a little bit bigger than um, like what my design is so that I have a little bit of room on the outside of my stencil. So once I have that resized to the size that I want it to be, I then took my two inch line and placed it over top of the rectangle shape that I created. And then I'm highlighting those two together. I'm going up to a line at the very top and then I'm going down to center horizontally so that everything is centered. I'm then highlighting those two together once again and then I go down to the bottom right hand side where it says slice and I select that. And then I just remove the two inch line and then it'll have two of them since it cut it out and then those two I can just delete. So then I now have my two inch line cut out of my stencil. I'm then gonna be taking the one inch by 14 inch one and then I'm just gonna be placing that. Well, first I need to make sure that it's on the front. So I right clicked and went down to move to front and then I'm gonna be placing that on the left hand side exactly where I want it to be for me to slice it out. And then I did the same thing. I highlighted those two together and then I went down to slice and sliced out the image. Only this time I'm only deleting the dark backing line and then I'm using that yellow one again to do the other side. I did the exact same thing, just got it all spaced where I want it to be and then I highlighted it together, went over to slice and sliced it out. I then can now delete the two one by 14 inch line. Now I have one stencil made, but I am gonna be needing a second one. So I just right clicked and then went to duplicate and now I have two. Now I'm gonna be doing my B stencil. So for this one, I went over to that square shape that I had already created. And then I'm just gonna be resizing that to the size that I want. I did unlock it so that I can make the square shape into a rectangle or whatever shape I want. 
and then I'm placing my B stencil over top of that, just getting them the size that I want and exactly centered the way I want it to be. And then once I have that all set, I'm just highlighting them together and then slicing the image. And then once I have them sliced, I'm just deleting the B and then there I have my B stencil. And then just moving things around on my canvas where I want them to be and then I'm going up to the right hand side and selecting make it. Now I'm going to be choosing if I'm going to want a mat or not. I am going to be using a mat and I am using my 12 by 24 mat and then selecting continue. And then everything's fine. I don't need to change anything. So I'm selecting continue again. And then this is where I can choose my material. I did go up to browse and then I just typed in stencil in the bar up top and it pulled up all of the stencil and I stencil vinyls. I selected just the regular stencil vinyl and this is what it looks like. It has this grid on the front of the vinyl and then on the back of the vinyl is just a plain white matte backing. I am going to be placing this vinyl side up onto my mat and then placing the mat into my machine and then it is all ready for me to cut out. Now that my stencils are all cut out, I did do three stencils on one cut. So I just need to cut out all three of the stencils so that they are individual. And then I am going to be weeding the vinyl. So with the stencils, you always want to weed the actual design of the vinyl out. Normally, if you were just cutting out regular vinyl, you would weed the vinyl around the design. But since you're making a stencil, you weed the actual design out. Next, I'm going to be applying my transfer tape. With the stencils, you do the same thing as you would to transfer a regular vinyl image. You use transfer tape. Now for this, I'm using a large roll of transfer tape so that I can get a really large piece of transfer tape. This is great to have if you are using larger stencils, like on a piece of furniture like I am here. So I'm just cutting my transfer tape to size and then I did transfer my stencil onto the tape. I did not get that shot, so sorry about that, but here you'll see that it's all transferred and then I'm just placing it onto my table where I want it to be. I'm using my Cricut scraper tool to press the stencil onto my table and then I'm just removing the, stents or the transfer tape. I did the exact same thing with my second stencil on the other side. I just pressed that down with my scraper tool to transfer the stencil onto my table and then remove the tape. Then for the B image, I'm just making sure that that's center on my table and then I'm using the scraper tool to press the stencil onto the table so that it sticks nice and well and then removing the transfer tape. Now that all of my stencils are attached, I can start painting. For the two stencils on each side of my table, I used the color River Walk from Folk Art and I did do two coats of this paint on all of the lines since this color is a little bit more sheer than some of the other colors from Folk Art. And then for the middle B stencil, I used the Folk Art chalk paint in the color Rich Black. Once the paint was completely dry, I then started removing the stencil vinyl from my table. Then for the very last step, I wanted this table to have a distressed look, so I took some 100 grit sandpaper and I just started sanding around all of the edges of the table. I did all of the edges on the bottom of the table and then I also went along the top edges of the table as well to distress everything. If you guys have been following me for a while, then you know that I love anything distressed. This is what the table looks like all finished. I think it looks so high end. I'm so in love with it. There's no way I would have been able to purchase this all redone for $6.50. I do want to mention that off camera I did do a matte polycrylic uh, sealer on the table so that the paint will last. So that keep that in mind if you're going to be recreating this, make sure to use a sealer over top so that your paint will last. Now moving right along into DIY number three. For this one, I'm not using a thrifted item, but this one was a clearance item from Hobby Lobby. I paid $1.99 for it. And for this one, I'm gonna be using the back of the sign for the front of my design today. First thing I did was remove the stickers and then I just removed the hanger that was on the sign as well. Next, I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster on the inside of the sign. Then for the frame around the sign, I used my River Walk color from Folk Art and I did do two coats of paint for this. Once the paint was all dry, I then took some more of that plaster color paint and I first started by just dry brushing that around the outside edges of the frame. And then what 
whatever was left over on my brush, I just really messily painted that on the outside of the frame just to give this piece that really like rustic, distressed look. And I was not worried about the two little holes from the hanger that you can still see here. I will be covering those up later on. Then it was time to create my design. So I went into Design Space and then selected Images. For this one, I'm gonna use an image that's already in Design Space. I typed in Botanical Flowers and it pulled up all of the Botanical Flowers in Design Space. So I just scrolled through until I found one that I really liked and wanted to use. So I just selected the one that I had picked out. And then as you can see at the bottom, it is selected. And then I'm just going to add to Canvas. It's now added to my canvas and I'm just going to resize it to the size that I need to fit into my frame and then I'm going up to make it at the top right hand side and then it gives me to where I can choose either without a mat or with a mat. For this one I'm using without a mat so I just select that and then go to continue and then this is where it's going to pull up the materials that you can choose from and I'm using my smart removable Cricut vinyl. Since I'm going to be using it without a mat, I am using it on this roll of vinyl that I have. As you can see, it'll tell you on the back side of the vinyl, it is a grid and it says smart removable Cricut vinyl. And then I'm just placing the roll into my Cricut roll holder and then just feeding that into my machine. It then reads the amount of vinyl just to make sure that you have enough before you cut out your design. Once my design is all cut out, I'm then weeding the vinyl and then getting it transferred onto my Cricut transfer tape. Again, I like to put the transfer tape over top of the design. I use my Cricut scraper tool to press it onto the tape. And then I flip it over and then use my scraper tool once again on the back side of the vinyl. And then I peel away the vinyl from the transfer tape. I think this way is way easier than if you were to peel the tape off from the front. I then took my image and got it all centered where I wanted it to be and then used my scraper tool to press that image on the back of my sign and then I just peeled away the transfer tape. Then I ended up wanting to add another little piece to the sign. So for this one, I took a scrap piece of wood and I just painted it with that Waverly paint and plaster. Once the plaster color was dry, I then took the river walk color and then I dry brushed that around the edges of this wood piece. Since I added another piece to this design, I did need to add another vinyl piece. So I went into design space and selected text. And for this one, I'm just typing out the word wildflower. And then for the font, I'm just gonna go up and change that. The font that I'm using for this word is the font ITC Chloe Girl, and this is a Cricut font. Once I have that changed, I'm just resizing it and then I'm gonna go to make it at the top right hand side once again. And for this one, I'm gonna be doing it on a mat. I'm just gonna be using a scrap piece of my Cricut vinyl. So I just cut that word out and then I weeded it just like I did with the other designs. Once it was all weeded, I got it transferred onto my transfer tape and then transferred my word onto my wood piece. Then for this wood piece, I used some hot glue to attach it at the bottom of my sign right over those holes that were in the wood. And this is the sign all finished. It was so easy to do. I love that I'm able to create so many custom designs with my Cricut and in Cricut Design Space. There is no way I would have been able to find something similar to this at a retail store for only $1.99. Next is DIY number four. For this one, I'm using this small wooden tray that I picked up from Salvation Army. It was under $4 and I just think it is so cute. It had so much potential and I knew I had to get it. So the first thing I started to do was just paint the entire tray with the Waverly paint in the color plaster. I did do two different coats of this paint to get that dark wood color all covered up. Once that paint color was dry, I then used my folk art paint in the color Rich Black and I just very messily went around all of the edges with this color and then I took what was left over on my brush and then just smeared that paint pretty much all over just to give it a really messy, distressed look. Now that my tray's all painted, I need to 
create my design. So I went into design space and selected text. For this one, I'm just typing out the word home. And then I do need to change the font. So I went up to font and then I'm going over and selecting Cricut since it is gonna be a Cricut font that I'm using. There's so many to choose from in design space, but I know which one I wanna use. So I just typed it in on the search bar and it is called Conrad Com. So I switched that and then I went over to text once again and typed out the word sweet because this is going to be the second word that I do. And then I went up to font once again and I am going to be changing this one and the font that I'm changing it to is Bickley Script. So I'm just going to resize that one a little bit and then I ended up changing the S to a capital S just because I think it looks a little bit better. And then just getting those two words all spaced the way I want them to be and resized to the size that I want them to be. And then I'm gonna be going to the home word and I'm right clicking and I'm gonna go down to duplicate because I want there to be two of these. Again, just taking that second home word, getting it all spaced the way I want it to be. I'm then selecting all of these together and then I'm going and aligning them center horizontally so that they are all centered. I'm then gonna highlight all of these together again and go down to the right hand side and select attach. This is going to make all of the words one piece. So that'll be one cut when I'm cutting them out. I then went over to images and I want to have some kind of flower wreath around these words. So I typed in flower wreath. It pulled up a bunch of different ones in design space. I selected the one that I want and then I added it to my canvas. And then just resizing everything and getting everything aligned to the way that I want it to be. And then I'm gonna highlight them together once again and then go down and attach them so that it'll make it to one cut when I cut it out with my machine. So then I'm just gonna go up to make it. And then for this one, I am gonna be using just my regular Cricut vinyl with no mat. So I selected that and it is my removable Cricut vinyl. So I selected that as well. Then my Cricut just cuts out my design and then it's all ready for me to weed. After I have my vinyl all weeded, I'm then gonna be using my Cricut transfer tape to just place over top of the image and then that scraper tool to press the image onto the tape. I'm then gonna flip over the vinyl and then use that scraper tool along the backside and then peel away the backing from the vinyl and the tape. I'm then getting my image centered on my tray and then just using that scraper tool to press the vinyl image onto the tray. Once it's all pressed on, I'm then removing the transfer tape. Here's the tray all finished, another affordable project with a high-end look. There's no way you'd be able to purchase a tray like this for under $4. I just think it turned out super cute and I can't wait to display it in my home. Now moving along into the fifth and final DIY today, I'm gonna be transforming this wooden Betty Crocker cutting board that is shaped like a spoon. I paid $6.99 for it at Salvation Army and I just think it is so cute and has so much potential. The first thing that I did was just remove the leather tie that was at the very top of the cutting board. And then once that was removed, it was ready for me to paint. And I'm using my folk art chalk paint in the color Rich Black. I did a one coat of this paint on the entire piece. Then once that was dry, I used some 100 grit sandpaper and just went around all of the edges of the spoon to make it look a little bit more distressed. Then it was time to get my design that I wanna use on my piece. So I went into design space and selected images. And for this one, I just typed out kitchen conversions. I knew that design space had so many different ones to choose from since I use design space pretty frequently. I kind of already know what they have and I am gonna be using one of the designs in design space today. But before I did that, before I selected my design, I went over to material type and I did select vinyl so that it pulls up all the ones that I can do with uh, vinyl. So I just went and selected the one that I want. I added it to my canvas. And again, this one's super easy. It's a really cute design already in design space. I just resized it and then went to the top right hand side, select make it. And then it was time for me to select if I needed my mat or not. You guys have seen me do this throughout the video several times, but if you're just getting started with Cricut, this way you'll actually get the hang of it by watching each step throughout the video. 
I'm not using a mat, so I selected without a mat. And then for the material, I am gonna be using a removable vinyl. The vinyl that I'm using is a white removable Cricut vinyl. I just put it in my roll holder, kind of like I did the black vinyl that I used earlier on in the video. I fed it through my machine and then cut out the design. For this one, I already have weeded out my image and then I'm using my Cricut transfer tape to get it transferred onto the tape. And then I'm just gonna be getting all centered onto my spoon the way I want it to be. And then I'm using my scraper tool to press the design onto the surface of the spoon. And then once it's all on, I'm just removing the transfer tape. For the last step, I took a piece of cotton cord from Hobby Lobby and I strung it through the hole at the very top of the spoon and tied a knot. This is what it looks like all finished. I love how easy this one was to do. It looks so high end and it costs under $7. It goes perfect in my current kitchen and I cannot wait to display it. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I do want to thank Cricut so much for sponsoring today's video. Thank you so much for watching.